still struggle with getting this thing squared correctly. All right, we're at the end of our second day here in St. Paul. Pretty much yesterday was a wash. Slept all day, ate a little bit, took showers, and bam. Black boots now. Found some black leather dye, and I will no longer be the butt of every gay joke, every person we meet along the way. At the very onset of their trip, the, uh, the hobbits run into this character, Tom Bombadil. Like, when they get into their first little encounter, and um, he's this like uber powerful elf that just sort of lives in seclusion. Uber, I'm glad you managed to find a way to work the word uber, uber into a... And uh, you know, they he gives them some help and sort of like, you know, thinks over their plight of this ring situation. And then what's cool is that, you know, other than that, he's a completely side character. Like there's, there's no other reason he should have been involved, but like later in the story when all these other like Gandalf and Elrond and them are all talking about what to do with the ring. They, they bring up Tom Bomber. They're like, well, maybe we can give it to him. Like, he could be able to handle it. And they're like, nah, that guy's, like, he's not good for anything anymore. Like, he just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be willing to help. It's just neat that this, this, he's sort of like Dale. We just ran into him at the beginning of our trip, has a world of knowledge, gives us a bunch of stuff, and then just sort of like scoots us on our way. And he's just like this wise old sage. Mm. Uh, I'm just glad it's you telling this so you can be the uh, the Lord of the Rings dork for the uh, for the camera. Okay. I'm comfortable with my uh, dorkdom. We have this thousand mile challenge thing that I mean I don't know. I guess I feel compelled to do it because it has challenge right in the name. Challenge is accepted, bitch. Yeah, um, but at the Ooh, same time, thing. like it's obviously really vain to blow through a giant portion of the country that may have otherwise been interesting and tremendous physical danger. Clubman handlebars that are sort of the racer style from the 70s. Uh, less comfortable, but you look better doing it, and that's really what it's all about. You know, so that we can get a plaque that says we did it. I mean, I don't even know what that proves. Got a couple of different ways to do this but route. If you want to just like drink it in of like with the how far of the United States that we're crossing, you know, we're, we're literally driving a about five percent of the distance around the world. <laughs> so, um... We're gonna do some square dancing once we get out of Minnesota. <laughs> get out into South Dakota, some of that cowboy country. Hey guys. <laughs> about five till one, getting ready to get on the road. We are heading to Butte, Montana. That's about a thousand miles. We'll be ready for a montage, America. camera and you can hear me we have our first encounter with the police I got one for 70 to 55 we found our, our old friend Cord but I don't know if you can tell but it's just a straight road forever and ever all right well we need to get on the road before we burn the uh, the small gains that 80 miles an hour are giving us on a thousand mile truck. So, uh, we're slowly settling into the realization that we're going to be driving all night again. Yeah. Sorry, Mom. Uh, the sun is brutal, so we had to stop no, and unpack no, our sunglasses. Just the yeah. Since we're driving yeah. west, sun setting in the west. Just driving <laughs> directly into a cloudless western sky. Nothing, nothing. We'll totally deal with this nature yeah. way more than not having it. For every hour on the, we're on the road, uh, if we take a 20 minute break, that is 18 hours of driving and six hours of break. Yeah. So, so that puts us in comfortably. I mean, I, no, that's not comfortably, that's tight. If we keep our speed up and if we keep it to 20 minute breaks, which we have consistently not done. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're I honestly don't think we're making this speed. Ever since we sort of more or less decided that we were going to do this whole thousand mile thing, Ian's become very quiet and pensive and concerned with scheduling and how long it's taking, whether or not we planned enough, and I'm just sort of thinking it'll happen or not.
can't use engine braking because I'll burn the gas. I only have the rear brake. If deer jumps out, if deer jump out, I'm fucked. I just really hope that's gas up there.